Hello, I'm continuing my reviews on the Godzilla series with Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster, or Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster, depending on how you want to pronounce the character's name. Now, Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster is the fifth film in the Godzilla franchise, and it acts as a direct sequel to Mothra vs. Godzilla, which came out earlier the same year, 1964. It's kind of funny that they released two Godzilla movies in the same year, but 1964 was the 10th anniversary of the original Godzilla. Now, what the film is once again directed by Shiro Honda and is written by Shingichi Sekuzawa, Again, I'm not really sure if I'm pronouncing his name properly. And the film also acts as sort of a sequel to Ashiro Honda's 1956 film, Rodan, because the titular character from that movie also shows up in this movie. Now, Toho did many other kaiju films outside of the Godzilla series, and some fans argue that the other kaiju films are still in the same continuity as the Godzilla series. Like, a lot of people see what Toho did in the 50s and 60s as sort of an early precursor to the stuff that Marvel is doing now. I would say the big difference is Marvel actually had that stuff planned out from the beginning, where, let's be real, Toho only decided to set a lot of these movies in the same universe as sort of an afterthought. Like, let's be real, when Ashiro Honda first made Rodan, or the first Mothra movie, he had no intention of those movies actually being in the same continuity as Gojira. Yes, a lot of Toho's kaiju films, you could argue, are in a shared universe, but it's more of a retroactive shared universe. Because the continuity that this movie has with the first Rodan movie is loose, to say the least, like, yes, when Rodan first shows up in the movie, he comes out of a volcano, and the two Rodans from the first Rodan movie were defeated by falling into lava, but that's really the only connection. They don't reference the fact that there were two Rodans. Now, Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster was sort of a turning point in the series. For one, this was the introduction of King Ghidorah, who has become arguably Godzilla's greatest antagonist. Like, King Ghidorah, in a lot of ways, is to Godzilla what the Joker is to Batman. Like, even people who aren't Godzilla fans know King Ghidorah. He's become one of the most famous kaiju of all time. But it was also a turning point in the series in the sense that this is where the series really started to get geared more towards children. Now, this is not an out-and-out -out kids film. I think when they made this film, they still had an adult audience in mind, but in the film, they give the monsters more human-like personalities, and this is really what set the series on the path to becoming more of a children's series. Also, this was the first time where Godzilla was an anti-hero. He starts off the movie as kind of a villain, but becomes an anti-hero by the end of the film, and he would pretty much be an anti-hero or an outright hero in the rest of the Shoha Godzilla films. They also give Godzilla a slightly goofier look in this one, because he's not meant to be taken as seriously as he was in the first four films. The same goes for Rodan. And the film is really a comedy, like it's almost a parody of the first four Godzilla movies. Now, even though the film is a comedy, and even though the monsters are goofier in this one, the human characters still treat the monsters as a serious threat. And there's still a real attention to the human characters. Actually, if you watch the original Japanese version of this, it's not till very late in the movie where the monsters really start to show up. That's why I really gotta laugh at all the people who complained about 2014's Godzilla, that apparently there wasn't enough Godzilla in that. Well, welcome to your first Godzilla movie. The whole point of these earlier Godzilla films is they're supposed to be about the human characters and how their lives are being disrupted by the appearances of these giant monsters. But, to be fair, one of the biggest issues with Godzilla 2014 is the human story really wasn't that interesting, whereas these earlier Godzilla films, contrary to what some people might tell you, I think had really good human stories. Now, Ghidorah the Three-Headed 
three-headed monster I happen to really enjoy. Yes, it is what started the series on the path to becoming much goofier, but since I do like the goofier Godzilla films just as much as I like the serious Godzilla films, I really don't mind that. Now, it's not one of my personal favorites. I do have to be in a specific mood to watch this one, but I do think this is one of the most well-made Godzilla films. Eiji Tsuburaya's effects work in this movie is actually really impressive. Akira Ifukube's score is excellent, and Ashiro Honda's direction is really on point. And the script is actually really clever and funny, and I like the mix of different genres in this film. Like, it's a monster film, but it's also a comedy, and it's also a spy thriller. Like, you definitely see the influence of the 007 movies in this. Now, what the plot of Ghidorah, the three-headed monster, is a princess is visiting Japan, but there are people within her country's government who want her assassinated. So, an assassin plants bombs on her plane, but before the plane blows up, she's saved by aliens. But now that she's possessed by aliens, she's going around claiming that the world is about to end. And throughout the film, this assassin is going after her, so a cop and his sister, who's a journalist, are trying to protect the princess. Meanwhile, you have this group of scientists investigating a meteor that landed in the mountains that appears to be increasing in size. And eventually in the film, Rodan and Godzilla show up, and then eventually this meteor cracks open, and a giant three-headed dragon known as King Ghidorah comes out of it. So it appears that the alien-possessed princess's prophecies are coming true. And the alien presence that's possessing the princess claims that King Ghidorah destroyed her home planet thousands of years ago, which, if you watch the original Japanese version, her home planet is Venus, but if you watch the American version, her home planet is Mars. Now, throughout the film, the Shobijin, who are Mothra's twin fairies, play a major role in the story. Now, at the end of the previous film, Mothra was killed in her fight against Godzilla, but then her egg hatched, and two baby Mothras came out of the egg and defeated Godzilla. In this movie, you find out that one of the baby Mothras died. So, the one who survived has essentially taken up the mantle as the new Mothra, but she's still a baby in this movie, but the Shobijin call her to Japan to try to get Godzilla and Rodan to team up with her to try to stop King Ghidorah. And that's the basic plot of Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster, and again, this was a real turning point in the series, because in this one you really do see the monsters having human qualities, like there's actually a scene in this movie where Godzilla, Rodan, and Mothra are talking to each other, and the Shobijin are translating what they're saying for the human characters. It's a really silly scene, but it's meant to be silly. The film is so far removed from what the original Godzilla was, but at the same time, though, I don't really mind it that much. Like, I justify it in the sense that this film really is a comedy. I mean, you have a scene in this movie where Godzilla gets zapped in the nuts by King Ghidorah. But while Godzilla and Rodan are certainly taken less seriously than they were in previous films, King Ghidorah in the movie is still treated as a pretty scary villain, actually. Especially when you consider that apparently for thousands of years, he has been traveling throughout the universe, going from planet to planet, destroying all life on said planet. That is a scary concept when you stop to think about it. And the way that the film builds up King Ghidorah as sort of this ominous oncoming storm is actually pretty chilling. And the movie actually does a really good job at balancing out the monster story with this story about the assassin going after the princess. And the human characters are also really good. I do want to point out that Takashi Shimura actually has a small role in this movie as a scientist. Shimura played Professor Yamani in the original Godzilla film, so it was pretty cool seeing him again, even though he's obviously not playing the same character. And Akihito Harata, who played Dr. Sarazawa in the original film, comes back in this movie to play a police chief. You also have the same actress who played one of the main characters 
characters in Mothra vs. Godzilla coming back in this movie playing a very similar character, but apparently it's not the same character. You also have Hiroshi Kozumi coming back in this movie playing a character who apparently is not his character from Mothra vs. Godzilla, but it might as well have been. But again, I really do like Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster. It's not one of my personal favorites. I do have to be in a specific mood to watch this one, but if you could put something like the original Godzilla, which was a dead serious movie, out of your mind, it's a fun monster romp. Now, before I end this video, I want to cut to a short review from my friend Christian Feliciano, who at this point has pretty much become a regular in these Godzilla reviews. The moment I stopped questioning the believability of a moth fighting a lizard, they throw aliens and a big-ass pterodactyl in there. And I think to myself, what the hell? But I love King Ghidorah, the three-headed monster. This is one of my favorite Godzilla films because this is where the whole superhero thing really comes into play. This is where it really loses its mind. A woman gets possessed by an alien, because why not? You have King Ghidorah, this, you know, the arch enemy of Godzilla, the greatest villain in the whole franchise, and one of the greatest villains ever. I'm talking, for me anyway, he's up there with the Joker, he's up there with, with Penguin, he's up there with Darth Vader. He is just one of the greatest villains that has ever existed. I love King Ghidorah, the three-headed monster. I love that he's this giant dragon with three heads. And he shoots lightning out his mouth. Probably his ass, but I'm not sure. And Godzilla, I mean, you know, the fact that he becomes a superhero at this point in this one, he becomes a hero. Um, you know, Mothra has to get the other two. Because at first, okay, Rodan and Godzilla fighting each other, whatever. Mothra, of course, says, hey, we got to go fight Ghidorah. And, you know, because he's this big baddie and he's destroying the world. And they're like, okay, yeah, fine, whatever. So then now Godzilla is a hero. And from me, from that point on, you know, he's a hero. And I love that about Godzilla. I've always been fascinated by the idea that Godzilla is a hero because of the fact that whenever they put giant creatures in stuff, they always make them evil. You know, monsters are always evil in all these, fil in all these types of films. Um, whether we're talking about, you know, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea where we have a giant squid, it's, you know, it's a monster. It wants to attack you. Or we're talking about Moby Dick, depending on, you know, your point of view of Moby Dick. Because to me, I see the whale as a hero, but whatever. They consider him evil, fine. Um, you know, they always consider these creatures to be evil. But Godzilla being good fascinates me. I love that about Godzilla being a hero. You know, being this great superhero, that the, the defender of man and, and destroyer of monsters. Like, I love that about him. I think that's awesome. And then, of course, I love the rivalry between him and King Ghidorah. I love that he has an arch enemy. That's how far, you know, that's how far we get with this. That's how superhero -y we get with this, that he has an arch enemy that keeps returning every so often. I think that's really fun. Uh, this is a really fun film. It's very corny. Don't get me wrong. This is a very, very corny film. So, you know, if you're above a certain age, you know, you're really going to see it as corny. But if you grew up watching Godzilla, if you don't mind the corniness, if you love things like Power Rangers and Beetleborgs and all that old Super, you know, what is it, Super Sentai, I guess, you know, the original Power Rangers. If you like that, that stuff, you will love this movie. And if you just, you know, love Godzilla in general, you just like the new films and you say, hey, I want to check out the old stuff, you'll probably enjoy this too because of the fact that King of the Monsters, the brand new one, um, takes pretty much its plot from this one. I mean, if you think about it, it's Rodan, Mothra, Godzilla versus Ghidorah. That's pretty much what it is, and that's what you get in the new one too. So if you want to check out where that started... You got it right here, and you get to see Godzilla, you know, finally become a hero after all the other films where he was pretty much the bad guy. Uh, and that, you know, is, I, I love it. You know, it's a great film. You'll enjoy it. If you want to enjoy it, um, if you just don't like cheese, I say avoid it. But if you, if you don't mind it, check it out, and you will enjoy it. Kids will definitely love it. Kids, 
kids are very fascinated by giant creatures. They're very fascinated by Godzilla. He's just a really fascinating creature to them. I remember when I was a kid, I was very fascinated by him. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, thank you so much. And bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed my friend Christian's take on this movie. And that was my review on Ghidorah, the three-headed monster. And bye.